News with Bill, Episode 13, Tattooed Eyeballs. Hi, and welcome back to News with Bill, where I tell you all about the weird, odd, and bizarre news stories that you won't believe are true. And in a lot of cases, you'll wish they weren't. Hey, before I get started, just want to tell everybody, happy 2023. Now, we're about a month in, and, well, it seems like 2023 might end up being just as disappointing as 2022 was. But on the bright side, people are still doing really stupid things, which gives us a reason to talk. So, let's get on with the first story today. All right, starting off episode 13 with a KFC customer shoots worker over corn. A Missouri KFC worker was shot in the stomach after telling a customer that the East St. Louis restaurant was out of corn. An investigation into the incident revealed that a man was in the drive through of the restaurant when he was informed that they were out of corn. According to the police report from the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, he began making threats towards the employees from the speaker box, then pulled up to the drive through with a gun. A 25-year-old employee went outside to confront the customer, obviously a mistake, and minutes later came back inside and said that he had been shot. He was shot once in the abdomen and was listed in critical but stable condition. The customer fled the restaurant after the shooting and has not been caught as of this report. Police said the suspect faces charges of first-degree assault, fourth-degree assault, and unlawful use of a weapon. Now, the sad thing to me about this story is, is there really a single thing at KFC that is even remotely worth fighting for? All right, next up, uterus surgery means no kidneys. An Indian woman who went into a private clinic to have her uterus surgically removed woke up from the procedure to find that both of her kidneys had been stolen. So back in September, Sunita Devi, a woman from Bizarre's Muzaffarpur district, went to a private clinic in the Bariyarpur to have her uterus surgically removed. Only instead of her uterus, doctors there removed both of her kidneys and then disappeared. The thing is, this was not that crazy urban legend we heard when we were growing up where You'd wake up in a bathtub full of ice with a note to call 911. This is 100% real. It's authentic. This kind of stuff really does happen, frightening as though it may be. Anyway, things came to light when Devi was rushed to the Sri Krishna Medical College and Hospital in Mazafarpur because her condition had started deteriorating after her original operation to have her uterus removed. Doctors examined the woman and informed her family that both her kidneys had been removed and she required dialysis to survive. The hospital superintendent told reporters, Doctors referred Sunita to Indira Gandhi Institute of Medical Services for treatment. She was sent back to this hospital after treatment there. Since Sunita has no kidneys, if she does not have dialysis for even one day, she could die. Devi's family filed a complaint against the owner of the clinic and Dr. R.K. Singh. Police started an investigation and found that the clinic was not even registered and that the doctor's qualifications appeared to be fake. Both suspects have been on the run since the incident, but according to the Hindustan Times, one of them was recently apprehended. The mother of three is still in critical condition and relies on daily dialysis sessions to survive. She will eventually require an organ transplant and is on the long waiting list for a kidney. Devi also appealed to the Indian government to make the shady doctors pay for what they did to her. Now, if you go to a fake clinic and see a fake doctor, I'm not sure what you should expect. And whatever happened to that uterus that was supposed to come out? Teen cyberbullied by her mom. A Michigan woman was arrested and charged this week in Isabella County 
for her role in a catfishing scheme that targeted her own daughter. 42-year-old Kendra Gail Lakari of Mount Pleasant was charged with two counts of stalking a minor, two counts of using a computer to commit a crime, and one count of obstruction of justice. Lakari's daughter and her then-boyfriend were being cyberbullied, but they didn't know it was her mom until they identified her this past spring. The cyberbullying stemmed from a December 2021 complaint to Beale City Schools, which means the harassment was going on for well over a year. At the time the report was made, Lakari was a girls basketball coach at Beale City Schools. In addition to the charges, she is also accused of using VPNs to frame her daughter's peers with the cyberbullying. Lakari has since made a full confession and is due back in court soon to determine if there's enough evidence to go to trial. Well, there's one thing that Lakari is definitely guilty of. Being mother of the year. All right, next up today we have a man tattooing a minor inside McDonald's. A South Carolina man has pleaded guilty to charges that he gave a minor a tattoo while they were both sitting at a table in the dining room of a McDonald's. 29-year-old Brandon Prussia last month was charged with two misdemeanor counts in connection with the illegal tattooing in the city of Lawrence, which is about 35 miles south of Spartanburg. Prussia was convicted of tattooing a minor and tattooing without a license. He was originally sentenced to nine months in custody, but a judge suspended that jail term in favor of 18 months of supervised probation. Prussia was also ordered to perform 30 hours of community service and pay fines and court costs of around 300 bucks. Police learned of the tattooing after a female customer, who was frustrated by a Friday night backup in the drive through line, looked into the restaurant and spotted Prussia tattooing the minor's arm. The woman recorded Prussia and the video clip was sent to the cops. As she filmed, the patron complained that Prussia and the tattoo recipient were out here doing tattoos instead of getting food orders out. The minor who Prussia tattooed was an employee at the McDonald's. According to police, this was not his first arrest at this McDonald's location. In October of 2020, he was busted for allegedly stabbing a man twice during a confrontation in the bathroom of the McDonald's, where Precious' girlfriend was employed at the time. You know what they say. Get arrested in my McDonald's franchise once, shame on you. Get arrested in my McDonald's franchise twice, shame on me. And now continuing with that tattoo trend, we have a woman going blind after tattooing her eyes blue and purple. A 32-year-old woman from Belfast, Ireland is apparently going blind after tattooing her eyeballs blue and purple despite the warning of her 7-year-old daughter. Anaya Peterson is a law student and a fan of body modification influencer Amber Luke who famously went blind for three weeks after tattooing the white of her eyeballs a bright blue. Well, now Anaya is slowly going blind after following in the footsteps of her idol. This responsible mother of five was apparently in awe of Luke's unique look and decided to have her own eyeballs tattooed in 2020. And this is after her seven-year-old daughter asked her what would happen if she went blind. Peterson got her right eyeball tattooed in July of 2020, and despite dealing with headaches and dry eyes during the healing process, she decided to have her left eye tattooed as well, just five months later. The procedure at the time seemingly went without a hitch. Then the trouble started. After a few months without complications, she woke up with a swollen and bruised eyelid. Because the swelling continued to get worse, Anaya checked herself into a hospital where antibiotics didn't work at all. She received medication through a drip for three days and had a biopsy taken out of one of her eyeballs. She eventually underwent eye surgery to save her vision, but even though she recovered enough to be discharged, her problems didn't end there. 
Although her inflammation problem was eventually resolved, the paint in her eyeballs already had a serious impact on her vision and general eye health, and she reported that her vision had deteriorated rapidly. After examining her, an ophthalmologist told Anaya that she is at high risk of developing glaucoma. Anaya said, I'm basically on the verge of going blind. I don't have 20-20 vision anymore. From a distance, I can't see features on faces. If I didn't have my eyeballs tattooed, I wouldn't be having this problem. Even today, I woke up with more floaters in my eyes. I can't get these eye tattoos out. I'm always going to have this problem. So, basically, I think that as I get older, it's best to let me go blind. When I'm 60 or 70, I don't want to have to go to the eye doctor every two or, th- every two or three days. Anaya said that her seven-year-old daughter, India, was always against her getting her eyeballs tattooed, but she didn't listen. Looking back, she says she should have just tattooed one of her eyeballs and left the other one alone. That way, she would still at least have one good eye. And since this story demonstrates that she is indeed one of the smartest women on the planet, be sure to keep an eye out for her. Man dead after being stung by a swarm of bees. Last month, in the South African city of Kwanse, a swarm of bees descended upon the home of 58-year-old Kosensha Jimbana, who welcomed them into his home because he believed they were messengers from his ancestors. Kosensha's belief came from a traditional belief shared among some South Africans which indicates that deceased family members can visit you in the form of bees. Following the encounter, Kosensha sought the advice of a spiritual healer who suggested that he go through with a Kosa ritual called Ukugotha Inyosi to communicate with the dead. As a result, the bees stung him to death. Following his death, Jimbana's younger brother, Mandela, shared his belief that his brother's death might have happened because their ancestors were angry with them. Mandala said, This is the most painful thing ever to befall our family. We don't understand why they were so angry with him, yet he had welcomed them into his home. He never tried to violently chase them away. A local representative confirmed this, saying, This is a welcoming ceremony. If you are a Kosa person, You don't run away and call municipal workers to remove the bees because bees are your visitors. So I think the lesson here is clear. If a swarm of bees gets into your house, ancestors or not, you need to get the hell out of there. There's really no sense in getting stung over old family drama. Disgusting British Revenge Jeff and Dawn used to be friends. The two men, both married and in their 70s, lived in Braintree, England. At the end of 2015, Jeff's marriage ended and he blamed Dawn. There are no indications as to why Jeff blamed Dawn, but nonetheless it seems that he kept his grudge even after moving over 200 miles away. In late 2017, Jeff learned that Dawn and his spouse would be out on vacation for New Year's leaving their home empty. This is just what Jeff needed to finally exact his revenge. Step one took more than a month. Throughout that time, Jeff took dumps into a bucket to collect as much of his own feces as he could. Step two, create some sort of pump device of his own invention and then connect it to a nozzle. Step three, travel to Don's home stick the nozzle through the mail slot in the front door, and spray feces into his home. He did this on New Year's Eve, and while we don't know what the final damage was, it sounds like Jeff really had a blast. And at least now we know the answer to the question, what can Brown do for you? All right, next up we have a man stab someone for not saying thank you. A New York City man has been arrested after allegedly fatally stabbing a man who confronted him 
for not saying thank you. The incident took place on September 20th at around 11.30 p.m. 37-year-old Juan Nunez opened the door of Tobacco Road in Brooklyn for 42-year-old Edwin Pedroza. It was just about not saying thank you for opening the door for him, employee Karif Al-Sadi told WABC. Al-Sadi explained that Nunez opened the door for Pedroza, who failed to thank him for his nice gesture. Why don't you say thank you for opening the door, Nunez said, to which Pedroza responded, I didn't tell you to open the door for me. A verbal dispute devolved into a physical altercation as both men fought one another. Nunez taunted Pedroza, saying, Stab me if you can do it. From there, Pedroza pulled out a knife and stabbed Nunez in the abdomen and the neck. The victim started screaming, He stabbed me! He stabbed me! Nunez stumbled back into the store, where he was bleeding all over the floor. The victim was rushed to a New York hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Pedroza biked away from the crime scene before he was arrested Friday morning in Brooklyn and charged with manslaughter and criminal possession of a weapon. You know, this brings up a good point. I'm going to have to start confronting people who don't thank me for holding the door open for them, especially if I ever travel to New York and hang out in front of a Brooklyn smoke shop. And things can only get better from there as a woman is busted in a domestic fight over an adult toy. A dispute over possession of an adult toy turned violent and resulted in the arrest of a Florida woman for battering her boyfriend. Responding to a domestic violence situation at a home in Fort Pierce, police interviewed the male victim who said that he and 34-year-old Chelsea White were having a verbal argument over a handbag and an adult toy. As the argument progressed, the victim asked White to return the toy to him because he owned it, but she refused to give it to him. When he wasn't able to get his toy back, the 33-year-old victim picked up White's handbag and said, I have your bag. Give me back my property. A struggle for control of the handbag followed, with White allegedly kicking and biting the man. The victim punched White to make her stop biting him. After investigators concluded that White was the primary aggressor, she was arrested for domestic battery and booked into the St. Lucie County Jail on the misdemeanor count. White was locked up in lieu of a $500 bond and has been scheduled for her arraignment. I don't know. Sounds like a classic case of assault with a deadly... Well, you know. And in the interest of being thematic with this episode, next story is going to kind of involve the same subject matter. And it is about a jail term for a woman in an adult toy stabbing. So in this case, a Kentucky woman who stabbed her male cousin during a dispute over a borrowed sex toy has been sentenced to 12 months behind bars. 34-year-old Crystal Denham was sentenced yesterday in connection with last year's assault of Michael Barton, who police identified as Denham's cousin and neighbor in Corbin, Kentucky, a city 85 miles south of Lexington. Police were dispatched to Denham's home after she called 911 to report that she had stabbed Barton. According to court documents, when a cop arrived at the residence, Mrs. Denham was sweeping the porch. Denham told police that Barton had come over to her home and they had gotten into an argument over a sex toy. Denham had borrowed the item in question, and Barton wanted it back. After telling Barton to leave her property, Denham grabbed him by the elbow and then said that she used the kitchen knife in her hand to stab him, but didn't think that she drew blood. When police contacted Barton at his residence, he had minor cuts to his arm, armpit, and back. Barton confirmed that the pair had gotten into an argument over the sex toy. He stated that when he went to leave, Denham began acting crazy and stabbed him. Barton declined medical treatment at the scene. Following her arrest for felony assault and several misdemeanor charges, Denham was booked into the Whitley County Detention Center. 
she spent eight months in custody before being able to post her $10,000 bond. Well, I have a feeling that their next argument will be over the batteries. Vacationing Cop Bladder Choices A Chicago cop vacationing in Florida was arrested after being caught urinating into an ice machine at a beachside bar. According to police, an employee of the Jimmy B's Beach Bar in St. Petersburg was attempting to get ice from the ice machine at around 12.30 a.m. when he discovered 30-year-old Henry Kapouch urinating on the ice in the machine. When the worker told Kapouch to stop, he cursed him and shoved him a couple of times. He then shoved a security guard. When police arrived at the bar, which is a part of the Beachcomber Resort, they found Kapouch and his girlfriend on the nearby sand. Kapouch actively resisted and did not obey lawful commands while being detained. Kapouch was arrested for battery and disorderly conduct, both misdemeanors. He bonded out of jail the next day after posting a $650 bond. Kapouch is a Chicago Police Department officer who has been on the force for five years. Now, I don't, make, I don't want to make the obvious joke about him putting the P in Chicago PD. I mean, he has enough to worry about already. Everybody knows that when internal affairs calls, you're in real trouble. And now circling back to our previous theme, man strikes girlfriend with adult toy. During an argument early Thanksgiving morning, a Florida man threw a sex toy at his girlfriend, leaving the woman with a bruise on her torso. Police investigators say Christopher Passetto and the victim were inside a room at the Sun Island Motel in St. Petersburg around 4.40 a.m. when a verbal argument turned violent. According to an arrest affidavit, Passetto was packing his suitcase to leave when he began throwing the victim's items out of the luggage. During the process, the woman told police Passetto hit her with an adult toy in her torso, leaving a painful bruise. When questioned by the cops, Passetto reportedly admitted to throwing items but does not recall exactly what items he threw. The 6-foot-2, 300-pound Passetto, who cops say was under the influence of alcohol, was arrested for domestic battery. He posted a $1,000 bond and a judge has ordered him to have no contact with the victim. So, this is yet another story in this episode involving violence and injuries by adult toys. And I think that the message that we all need to get from this, and all these stories, is... Doc! Alright, next up we have a Florida teen stabbed and beat his mom. A Florida teenager is being charged with first-degree attempted murder after authorities claim he stabbed his mother and hit her over the head with a frying pan until the handle broke. The violent outburst from 17-year-old Tobias Jacob Brewer happened because his mother was constantly on his case about cleaning his room. Following the attack, Brewer reportedly fled the scene and led authorities on a pursuit before he was eventually arrested and booked into a juvenile detention center. Brewer's girlfriend and another friend were also arrested, according to the report. Brewer, whose case has been transferred to adult court, later told detectives that he stabbed his mom multiple times with a pocket knife before hitting her in the head with a frying pan until the handle broke. He admitted to detectives that he was upset because of his mom's nagging. The police report said, The suspect advised that he does not like cleaning his room and was tired of the victim constantly harping about it. Brewer added that he stole both of his mom's car keys and lifted money from her purse so that he could have money once he left the area. The mother is currently listed in critical condition, and when asked by authorities who attacked her, she took a breath and allegedly said, Toby did this. Toby's future bosses, teachers, and spouse better take note of this story and Leave him alone. Patient turned off ventilator. 
A 72-year-old woman in Germany has been arrested after she allegedly twice switched off a hospital roommate's ventilator because she was annoyed by the sound that it made. The woman was detained on suspicion of attempted manslaughter after the incident in the southwestern city of Mannheim occurred. Police and prosecutors said the suspect was alleged to have switched off a woman's ventilator and then, despite staff telling her that the machine was vital for the patient's survival, switched it off again later in the evening. A joint press release published by the Mannheim Public Prosecutor's Office and the Mannheim Police Department alleged that the woman switched off the ventilator before 8 p.m. after she felt disturbed by the noise coming from the oxygen device. The statement read, Although the suspect was informed by the hospital staff that the oxygen supply was a vital measure, she is said to have switched off the device once again at around 9 p.m. Authorities reported that the 79-year-old victim had to be revived and still required intensive care. The suspect was brought before a judge and later taken to trial, and the investigation is still ongoing. <laughs> this just goes to show you, you really can't, do, <laughs> you can't annoy old people because you never know what they're going to do. And finally today, a former cop shoots a teen at McDonald's. Former Texas cop James Brennan has been indicted by a grand jury on multiple charges in connection with the shooting of an unarmed teenager in a McDonald's parking lot. Brennan, then a San Antonio police officer, is charged in connection with the shooting of 17-year-old Eric Cantu back in October. At the time, Cantu was inside a car eating a burger. The shooting was captured and subsequently released body camera footage. Brennan will be facing one count of attempted murder and two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant. In Texas, attempted murder is a second-degree felony with a potential 20-year prison sentence, while the aggravated assault by a public servant is a first-degree felony carrying a potential life sentence. The prosecutor said, no one should have to sit by their child in a hospital and worry about whether they will make it through the night just because they were in their car eating a cheeseburger. I don't know. Sounds like a Big Mac attack to me. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of News with Bill. Episode 13, let's keep it rolling. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. And I'd love to hear your feedback or ideas, so please let me know what you think. Comment on this episode at newswithbill.com. I'm at newswithbill on Twitter and Instagram. You can send email feedback to feedback at newswithbill.com or call and leave a voicemail on the News with Bill hotline at 209-854-4620. Don't forget to tell a friend about the show. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>